Today, I'm going to be making a riser block for my Morgan. Welcome to another episode. So, in a previous episode, I made this injection mold here, and then I used a riser block that I actually borrowed from another project. But the problem with this riser block is that there was no way to use the centering hole to locate this in the injection molding machine. So in this episode, what I'm gonna do is make the riser block. Uh, as soon as I found out that the minimum height for the mold was four inches, I placed an order for some more material, some two and a half, two inch thick by four inch wide aluminum. And that is um, pretty much the maximum size that will fit on my vise and it should work fine. At some point I'll probably make a larger riser, um, so instead of being four inches wide, it's more like six or seven inches wide, but I'll do that at some point in the future. This at least uh, will handle all the molds that I'm making at the moment. So when I was looking at this, I noticed that there were a couple extra holes in the heater block that were not in the manual. These are 5 16 18 holes, and so I can just uh, put some screws in there and use a much thicker riser block that's screwed in here and then has the alignment bolt in the center. Uh, and then I also want to make sure that I have holes in the riser for these holes here, which are for the ejector bolts that come up from below. So I want to make sure there's clearance for that. Let me take to you to the computer and I'll show you the design that I came up with to fit on here. This is using a two inch thick block of aluminum that's four inches wide and I made it eight inches long. The plate I think is actually eight and a quarter so I could have made it eight and a quarter. Then I have the two screws. These are the two inch long five sixteenth eighteen screws that will hold it in place in the correct location. We have the clearance holes for the ejector rods and then this is a hole that I'm going to tap 5 16 18 for the locating screw which is a low profile cap head screw. This is a Harbor Freight bandsaw that I bought for I think about $250 and I'm using a Sterrett blade rather than the the Harbor Freight blade but if you look here if I can get it to focus. You can see that the cut quality is actually quite nice and it's uh, square as well. So even though it's a really cheap bandsaw, for me it works really well. I'm going to put it in the uh, device so I'm going to use some uh, shorter uh, parallels because uh, that way I can clamp it. To... Actually I'm not sure I even need parallels. Let me try it without parallels first. Yeah, I'd say I don't need parallels. So what I'm going to do is uh, first I'm going to uh, clean up the sides, and then the top and the bottom, and then the ends. Uh, I don't really need to clean up all of the edges, but it'll look nicer if I do that. So I'm going to go ahead and clean it up. I'm going to start by facing the sides. I don't have an end mill long enough to cut this from the top, so this is the only way I can get a smooth finish here. This doesn't have to be exactly accurate. I basically need to be able to touch off a consistent uh, point from here to here to be able to recapture my zero when I flip it over. So I have a uh, square over here, and I can feel that it's uh, not square right now. So I have that a little bit tight, and I'll just uh, bump this and I can feel that it's not square. If I really wanted this to be square I'd use a dial indicator and move it up and down but as I said it doesn't have to be that square. Okay the other thing I was doing was feeling the, the pivot point. 
Um, I could feel that the pivot point was up here, so I knew I needed to bump it over a little bit. And now it feels like it's scraping all the way along. Okay, that should be good enough. I'm going to go ahead and uh, clean this off, probably by hand, um, by moving the jog wheel back and forth. Okay, that looks pretty good. Okay, if I take uh, the machine square and put it on there. It looks um, pretty darn good. I started with spotting the location of each of the holes. I wanted to drill to remove material in the center so it would make the next operation, which is boring, uh, a lot faster. The thing I didn't uh, take into account is because I put it directly down onto the vise, I'm actually drilling into the vise in that step. And then I'm doing the boring and I used the default. I forgot to change the feed rate. So this is boring at 90 inches per minute and you can see it's really moving material. This is using a 3 16th inch end mill to open up the hole for the screw clearance, but I made a mistake. Well, that hurt my pride a little bit, but uh, not much else. Um, and I uh, was a little slow pressing the, uh, the stop button. But what happened is, let me show you. Before I started, I measured the various tools to make sure I had enough clearance. And I measured this one. This has plenty of clearance. This is not the one I used though. I used this one, which as you saw, did not have the clearance. I took another 10 thousandths of an inch off the top to get rid of the, uh, the mark here that was really bugging me. And now the evidence of my mistake is gone. Well, except for this video. So I'm gonna flip this over and this way. And uh, set up the uh, zero point over here and uh, start running it again. Okay, it's all done. I'll put it out, pull it out and uh, just need to uh, tap this screw hole and then I'll be all set. I uh, tapped the middle hole uh, off camera and discovered that the screw that I use for alignment, let me show you this get it to focus, has a little lip on it, as you can see right there. So it wouldn't screw all the way down, and so I added an extra thick chamfer on here. So let me go ahead and install this. I've got uh, the two inch socket head crap, cap, cap screws. That'll hold it down uh, nicely and keep it uh, located. So when I put the centering uh, bolt in, it means that it will be, it will locate the molds. Okay, so let me get a mold. Here's the, uh, the mold I made with the centering hole. And as you can see, it goes on there, locates the mold perfectly. And uh, now I can take it off and put it back on. And it'll be in the same position each time with this in the correct location for the nozzle. So the nozzle will come down in the same place every time. So I'm really pleased with how this turned out. It is going to work with uh, all of the molds that I have in mind for the short term. As I mentioned in the intro, I might make a uh, one that's wider and covers more of the heater plate at some point in the future, but 
For now, this will do the job just fine. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Please give me a thumbs up, subscribe, comment below, and I'll see you next time.